Shalom, and welcome back to Bnei Noach Academy. Thoughts on the Torah. Please remember to hit the like button, to subscribe, and most importantly, to share this insight and inspiration with friends and family. When you look in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 22, this is immediately after the revelation at Mount Sinai. After God delivers to them the Ten Commandments. And now Moshe begins the process, Moses, that is, begins the process of teaching them, quote, the rest of the story. What is one of the first orders of business? God says in this verse, when you make an altar of stone for me, which is obviously talking about the era of the Holy Temple on Temple Mount in Jerusalem, where the altar was built of stone, solid rock, you should not build the altar from cut stone. Why? Because because if you do so, then you have raised your sword, your knife over it, over the stones, and you've desecrated them. In short, what God is saying, this altar, the purpose of it is to increase, to enhance the life of the human being, the life of the person. A knife, a sword, any destructive type of tool that's made out of iron, should not be placed over it. Because inherently, what they do is they take away, they diminish, they decrease the life of a human being. Why is this so important? Why now? What is so significant about this? What is the message here? And besides, who created knives? Who created swords? Who created weaponry? God himself. So is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Perhaps, is it, if is it a bad thing and you cannot defend yourself? What exactly is the Torah telling us? I think what the Torah is telling us is as follows. The knife, the sword, the weapon. Yes, it may be necessary. An army cannot go fight a war without weaponry. One cannot be a security guard or a police officer without a weapon. Because there are bad people out there. There are people who may attempt to hurt you, to hurt others, to take others' lives. And the Torah is the source for self-defense. The Torah teaches us, One who comes to kill you, not only allowed to defend yourself, but hashkem v'hargo. Hashkem means to preempt and go and kill him. Don't wait until he hurts you. Don't wait until he causes damage. If you're certain that this person, if it's clear and obvious that this person is attempting to hurt you, to take your life, then you must, not only you could, but you must defend yourself. And for that, you must have a sword. You must have a knife. You must have a gun. You must have a weapon. And the Torah is not telling you not to. The Torah is not telling you to turn the other cheek, so to speak, or to allow yourself to get hurt. On the contrary, like I said, and I re-emphasize, not only are you allowed to defend yourself, you have a God-given obligation to defend yourself. However, what the Torah is telling us is that ultimately, these agents of, quote, defense or murder are not something to be celebrated. They are ultimately, they're not holy. It's almost like a necessary evil. It's almost like a necessary agent that you can't do without when you need to defend yourself. But at the same time, this is not something that ultimately celebrates life directly. It can bring to it, but it in itself does not inherently celebrate life. And therefore, this is not exciting. 
this is not something that should be on the altar, which symbolizes the celebration of life by bringing atonement and by bringing longevity to people's life, both in the material sense and in the spiritual sense. This is a great lesson because we live in a country, in a free country, and we have the Second Amendment, which is a fantastic thing. We have the right to bear arms, but at the same time, Arms are not toys. Arms should not be exciting. If you need them, they're necessary, beautiful. You should have it. I'm not in any way an advocate of one not being able to be armed. Of course, learn how to use it. That's just my practical advice. Make sure you know very well what you're doing. Understand the law. Understand what you could and you cannot do. But as far as the gun, guns being some kind of sport, that is not a Torah way. That is not something that the Torah celebrates or advocates. In fact, the Torah is against that. And that's what you learn from here. Just to go out shooting, hunting for the sake of shooting, hunting, not because you need to eat or not because you need to defend yourself. Of course, a soldier should be well-trained, obviously. But we're talking about your average person. That's something that's not necessarily encouraged by the Torah, in fact, perhaps discouraged. And that is the point over here. Have a gun. Have the sword. Has her need, need of defense, need to secure your well-being. But this in, in itself is not an exciting thing. In itself is not something to be celebrated and to be put at the forefront of your life. You need it. It's a necessary object. Have it, but not, don't put it on the altar. Don't put it on the top of your list of the things that matter most to you, the things that mean to you the most and are exciting the most.